Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 10 of the Branding and Communications podcast. I'm Grace. I'm your host today, and I'm here with Lauren and Lucy. Welcome. Thank you, Grace. Do you guys want to say your titles here and what you do here for me? Sure. (laughs) Um, So I'm the assistant digital strategist, um, and that just entails being a content creator, but then also knowing how to get it out to the audiences that you want to reach. So it requires a lot of analytics. Um, I'm an intern. I'm just doing graphic design work, helping Skylar out with whatever she needs help with. Um, I've been doing a lot of digital content, which is different from what I'm used to. I've been used to doing a lot of print work and stuff like that. So um, getting more on the social media side, I think will be part of my internship throughout the summer. Where did you do more print work? Um, I worked at a couple places at Marquette, which is where I am going to be a senior this fall. Um, But I worked in their Office of Marketing Communication and then the Athletic Department, and I did like posters, um, thank you cards, like uh, save the date cards and mailers and things like that. Very cool. So I wanted you guys to all get the backstory of what they do, um, because today we're going to be talking about creativity in the workplace and how it can be channeled in different ways. Um, On Thursday, May 30th, it is National Creativity Day, so that's kind of what sparked the topic for this conversation. Um, But also, we've just talked about that here at Brannigan, you know, it's everybody is creative, whether you do more graphic or design work or not, um, you have to use some form of creativity throughout your day, and so yeah, we're just going to have a great conversation about that. Um, So, Lauren... Going back to the things that, you know, you do here, how do you think that you're creative or not? And maybe can you talk about how you, um, how you get to a point of something or a completed project? Yeah. Um, so going into this a little bit, I was already thinking about just, um, I always used to consider myself more of a creative person and a right brain person because I feel like they tell you when you're younger, oh, you're a right or you're a left brain person. So you're either logical or you're whimsical. And I considered myself the latter of the two, um, which is interesting now that I'm more in the analytics side of things, which happened, I guess, throughout grad school for me, just um, being interested in finding out the bigger why. Um, but I feel like there's not, like when you're trying to figure out, let's say, who you want content to be targeted towards, it's not necessarily just analytics. There has to be some creativity in that. So you have to be creative enough to be able to figure out, hey, maybe I think that this type of person would be someone who would respond well to this content, but then you have to take that and then be able to research that further because you can't just play a guessing game, I guess. Um, So I think it's a little of both that's involved in the process and you can't just be logical minded to choose a target audience and you also can't just be creative and then leave everything up to chance. Best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. So it's a little, yeah, yeah, it's a combination. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's good. What about you, Lucy? Um, So I, throughout school, have kind of came to the same conclusion as Lauren has, um, where you can kind of start with an idea, but you have to take a more analytical approach in order to have a more, like, successful design, I guess. So usually I would just be like, oh, I have an idea in my head, like, I'll just sketch it out quick and kind of like execute it on computer. Um, But um, through my classes, they've just taught more like you can't please everyone through one design. Like you have to keep target audience in mind. Otherwise, it's just like not successful and you can't leave it up to chance like you said all the time. So um, yeah, just designing for an audience and having that in mind like streamlines it better, I guess, during the creative process, because you kind of think like, oh, what does this audience react to, or stuff like that. 
So would you say that you do better when you have like a target audience or something bigger in mind or does it both of you guys or does it um maybe hold you back a bit or none of the above um I would say probably a little of both it's definitely easier to have a direction in mind like when someone's like oh just design this and you're like wait what like how like what do you want it to look like who is it even for a lot of my questions are like what size do you want it because they're like oh make this but it's just so ambiguous um but then again, if there's too much direction or like too many things you have to keep in mind, it like stifles creativity a little bit, I would say. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I feel like it's really helpful even if, if I'm doing something on social media, then on one hand, if you're, I'm trying to think about the best way to say it. Like I think you need to know why an audience would respond to what you're going to put out there in the first place. So um, if they are interested in maybe a service that um, you or your client has to offer, you would want to get straight to the point and then um, avoid making it overly wordy or something like that. But if you knew that you were targeting it towards an audience that maybe just wanted to get some more humor out of something, then you don't have to be afraid to use some more current lingo or just keep it young and fresh. So I think it just depends on um, what the audience wants and what type of tone you're able to give off. So I think it's really important to keep that in mind when you're creating content. See that. Lauren, you said you shifted over to more of the analytical stuff in grad school. Could you talk about that and how maybe that got you here or what you learned or what you didn't learn? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I always liked creating content and I liked um, even dabbling in a little of graphic design stuff in school as an undergrad. Um, and then as a grad student, I was pushed more into the world of research and forming a question and trying to find out how to figure that question out um, through experimentation and um, lots of trial and error. So I think that just made me more curious about um, always trying to figure out the greater why. And that can translate over to the work world pretty well, too, I think. Um, yeah, I just think that there, you can always go a little bit further when you um, are making something at work even. If you put something out there, you can't just say, oh, that's good enough, we made it, we're done, goodbye. You have to be able to measure whether or not that did well and what you can improve on next time. How can we tweak this? How can we change that? Um, what did we not execute as well as we wanted to? Um, so it's a, like I said, it's a little bit of trial and error, I think. Um, and so I think that that's really helped me shift gears into that because I used to be of more of the mindset that it was the job was done when you created it and you put it out there. And now I'm just more interested in learning about how something performed. So that's, that's definitely how grad school has helped me with that. Do you think that's shifted or that's gotten you here to this role, would you have found, do you think, uh, doing what you're doing today if you hadn't gone to grad school? I don't think I would be, actually. Um, yeah, because I actually didn't know very much about how to measure how a social media post did before grad school. Um, and yeah, it's just interested me a lot in just finding out the greater why. Why would an audience respond to this better than that? And yeah, it's definitely helped me. Lucy, I feel like the two of you guys kind of, at one point, it sounds like you took some graphic design classes in undergrad. You take classes at my, were you classes at my ed too? Unfortunately or, not. Just, well, not just at Marquette. I also took some of those classes at Marquette. Too. Yeah, <laughs> but you guys have similar backgrounds, and I feel like from what you've said about your childhood too, like thoughts, original thoughts of thinking or whatever. But Lucy, like hearing that, does that spark any interest or anything? Or do you think like, oh, maybe I should go to grad school or anything like that? Think more 
down that way you know Lauren shaking your head (laughs) (laughs) um grad school really has never been something I've been super interested in I think for the field that I want to go into which is more just graphic design based I'm not so much interested in like analytically like proven research or data or whatever Mm -hmm. showing why something worked like that doesn't interest me very much it's more like oh like why do you like this design like in your own like creative mind why do you like this piece if that makes any sense rather than like oh here are the numbers to prove that this audience responds better than this audience does so um no grad school for me probably (laughs) but your mom's probably happy yeah Yeah, probably (laughs) um but it's really cool like to hear people talk about that and like that's an awesome thing that people are able to see like on social media like such a great tool to come up with new content well sure it's different audiences because I feel like that goes back to I mean you need every kind of person and Mm -hmm. that is creativity just like creating the content is creativity Mm -hmm. and if you're creating great content you know you could have the best graphic designer ever but nobody's seeing it what's the point Mm -hmm. so kind of you know so um yeah I think that that's back to the getting back to the point of how everybody in the office is somehow contributing to the bigger picture and being creative while they're getting there (laughs) going off of what Lucy said too I think it's Sometimes the frustrating thing about being analytical is, like you said, you're interested in knowing why people would like a certain design. And sometimes you can see, oh, this many people engaged with this content, but it's hard to figure out why they would find something Mm -hmm. prettier to look at, so, or why they'd be more likely to enjoy that visually. So I think that that's what's sometimes it's difficult about that. And I think it's good to have um, variety in a workplace because if you're super focused on the numbers, you get really caught up in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then sometimes it's also fun to try and find those answers. Um, and I don't know if you can always find the answer. So I think that that's the thing we're all trying to keep on doing is just keep trying to find out what people like and how they respond to things so how do you guys uh, get creative or find creativity in the workspace um I start a lot by just going on Pinterest or like googling examples I guess and just being like oh that's how other people have done it like how can I push that a step further or like take a different approach because I found like a lot of times like an infographic for example there's like a very chronological way to set that up and like design it that's pretty like I don't want to say basic but typical I guess that people just like think of an infographic this is what they think of um but like just doing a quick search on Pinterest like there's so many different ways to format it and like to use different graphics to show measurement I guess or whatever you're trying to convey so I just getting examples and seeing what has been done and what has yet to be done is a place that I would start usually. Sure, shout out to Pinterest. Ooh, yeah, I was gonna we say. We all use you. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's hard. I like to be, like my environment kind of dictates being in a fresh state of mind to be able to um, think outside of the box. So I need to be listening to the right music to keep me focused. Um, and also a lot of online research. So if it's anything visual, Pinterest Mm -hmm. again, um, but also just seeing what other brands are doing out there, um, and what other digital strategists out there have done and what they've seen has worked for them, um, because I f- the hard thing about analytics is sometimes there's not there's not just one right answer and there's a lot of different ways to come to a conclusion about something, so it's just pulling from what you may have seen on the internet and then trying to come up with the best strategy for yourself um, because you can't just follow a five step way to figure out your answer. You need to figure out how it's going to work best for the project that you're working on. So. 
I can relate with the environment thing. I feel like I'm very perceptive to natural light. Definitely. <laughs> Which we don't um, have much of lately. Yeah, so no, not really. <laughs> but the conference rooms are a nice option. And today they seem to be the coolest option because yes. it's very hot in here. So <laughs> we don't have any AC. So that's, that's good at least. I don't know. Despite the natural light outside. Um, well, getting back to the topic. Um, so... Going back, you mentioned like your childhood and things that you identified yourself as growing up. Um, could you each give me like three words that you've always kind of identified with or that maybe have like trailed throughout your life as like, oh yeah, I am these things. Just out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I can, I know one word. I, I'll have to think on the other two, but like super basic as it is. Creative has been always one that has kind of followed me. My dad is graphic designer, and I used to go to work with him when I was a kid all the time. And I never knew what he did. I just knew that he was like an artist, very broad, but that's what I thought he did for a living. Um, so like I had that identity as well and just kind of took a lot of inspiration from him and like what he was working on. And his profession as an artist I thought was cool. And then I took design classes in high school and like I was um, in middle school and I loved art class and like the art projects and all that good stuff um, and then yeah so I kind of was on this graphic design track I guess for a while and then that's what I pursued in college now I'm here and it's something I'm gonna stick with probably <laughs> very consistent mm -hmm. um, I'd say similarly I always thought I was more artsy. I loved art class. I loved drawing through high school. And I also was a huge book nerd and still am. So um, I think I've just been really someone who just likes the idea of people expressing um, their ideas through written word and through pictures and all of that. And um, just the idea of storytelling so as much as analytics maybe don't seem like they're in line with being artistic I think it, it kind of does in a sense just because I'm interested in how someone could tell their story and I think that's a lot of what content creation is and um, the analytics side is just being able to fine-tune that and tell your story in the most effective way so um, yeah, I still love to read and I still love art and I think that analytics is just a way of doing that in a different way. Um, I have a question. <laughs> Which, do you guys consider yourself brainstormers? Do you like brainstorming? Yeah, I think brainstorming is something that is necessary no matter what you consider yourself, whether you consider yourself more or less creative. Um, I think there's always a period where you have to sit down and gather your thoughts before you get started in a project because I used to not be that kind of a person because I'd just dive into it and I'd be overexcited and I just want to get the job done. But then you find yourself at a standstill and you've done all this work and then you realize that you need to go back and rework things, um, which you still have to do even if you brainstorm. But I think that you go into things with a more collected mind if you think about all the different ways that you can go with something before you start. Um, so yeah, I think it's really important to do your research and just sit and make a mood board or whatever you have to do before you get started. What are some things that you think about before doing something? I don't know, what you could choose whatever project you want, but what are some things that come to mind first? Yeah, sometimes um, it, if it's to do with making a social media post, it's best to just go to the source, go on social media, get inspiration from um, a brand that is in a similar industry as the one that you're making a post for and um, see what kind of things they're coming up with, see how people respond to it. And sometimes that'll spark your imagination a little bit um, if you want to get people to engage with you is it best to ask a question or 
Um, maybe post a poll, something like that. Um, just seeing how other brands are doing it is sometimes a really good way to go. Um, I never really was a huge brainstormer up until this year. I took a course over at Myad, and the teacher was really into research, mm -hmm. which I was like, what does that have to do with design? What class was it? It was communication design too. So, okay. yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like was super like not into it. I did not want to do the research because I was like, I'm not writing a paper. I'm not trying to come up with any sort of data. It was like a project that just wasn't for any specific client. It was just to do it for the class, basically. Um, so I was a little bit irritated about the research part. But it made me realize the importance of brainstorming. And I came here, and on my first day, I sat down with Griffin and Skylar, and they were like, OK, like, here's a project. And then they like instinctively started like brainstorming and I was like what's happening <laughs> I was like you're not just gonna give me the project and be like okay go for it because that's just kind of what I've been used to I guess just diving right in so and it was really cool and super helpful to hear other people's ideas and like bounce different ideas off of them that came to my mind at first so yeah I definitely have come to know the benefits of it and would say I will try to use that more in my everyday design work. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to just say, I think it's good, especially, I was thinking of it more on an individual level, but I think it's good. Something that I've really enjoyed at Brannigan is our brainstorming that we do as a group because sometimes you are just in this one track mind and you're thinking of one thing and someone says something that you, was not even on your radar, but then that's the next big idea in your head after that. And I just think it's cool to be able to pull from different people's mindsets. So that's the fun thing about working here. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, as um, a person who likes to brainstorm before the brainstorm, Lucy, your situation sounds, I would have had a really hard time with that because <laughs> I always like to think about things I get an idea in my head of what I'm gonna talk about during the brainstorm. Mm -hmm. um, are you guys, you don't, Lucy, you don't sound like you're like that. Lauren, do you like to brainstorm before the brainstorm? Yeah, I do. Um, I, I like to come to the table with things because I think I'm afraid of spontaneity sometimes, which is something to work on. Um, How so? That's hard to answer. I, I wonder if that's just the way I'm wired. Um, I don't know, though, because I didn't always used to like to brainstorm and I didn't like research and I didn't like having to find the facts and that's shifted. So um, maybe that's just me now. I don't know. I like to have the answers and try to find the answers and I get frustrated when I don't. Um, but I also think it's hard because when you get into a brainstorm session with people, you are always going to build off of those answers and come up with something that you didn't even have in your mind before. So I think it's good to be prepared, but at the same time, um, it's good to be flexible too. Yeah, I would agree. I wouldn't say like I'm not a person who like doesn't ever brainstorm before the brainstorm. I don't like actively think, oh, I have to come up with some ideas before I go in. Like. Usually if there's a project that's been given, I'll start thinking like while the person's giving the project to me, I'll be like, okay, like it's this kind of media, maybe I should tackle it like this sort of way or like have a concept idea in mind and then just kind of walk into the brainstorm with those already in mind. But it's not something I sit down and like brainstorm by myself before I brainstorm with others, if that makes any yeah. sense. Yeah. No, yeah. totally. It okay. Does. So, um, another question I have, um, I think both of you guys could speak on, is more of the technical side of creativity. So, for example, a photographer has to know how to use his camera, right? Like the ins and outs of it, all the functions. Um, if it's on manual, then how to do all of that with it. And then also get a good photo and know what's going to turn out right, um, which I think I'm that end is what we've been talking about. But going back to the more technical side of, it, of things, um, how do you guys, do you guys struggle with that aspect of it? Is that something that comes naturally to you? 
Um, I think there's a huge learning curve, mm -hmm. no matter what it is. Um, I use the Adobe Design programs for like the stuff that I would create, um, and it can be extremely frustrating to try and figure out what you're trying to do and how to do it. A lot of times I'll have something in mind that I want to do, and I know it's possible to do it, but like I have no idea how. So it's just a lot of trial and error and a lot of Google searches. And sometimes I'll text my dad and be like, hey, I'm trying to do this thing. Like, do you know how to do it? And sometimes he'll know, but other times he's like, that's just not a thing. And I'm like, no, I know it's a thing. <laughs> so it's, it's a lot of work, but just becoming more familiar with the programs. And um, yeah, knowing the lay of the land helps a lot because they're kind of, a lot of things are hidden in funky places, like weird tabs hold like different tools and stuff like that so it's very technical <laughs> I feel like that's hard when you're you have a visual in mind too and then trying to explain that to someone if you have a question mm -hmm. is hard in and of itself to put into words what you want to show too so that's probably really hard yeah sometimes it's a huge struggle yeah. <laughs> but you conquer you push through Lauren what about you um I think with digital media, it's something that's always changing, even in the last few years. Um, and so that's something where you can take a class on Google Analytics and how to navigate that. But then that might even be changing in the next couple of years. And so you have to just stay on the cusp of what's new and what people are talking about and what's relevant. And so, like Lucy said, Thank God for Google, because <laughs> um, sometimes that's how you can figure out your best information. It's just um, good to be creative and think outside the box if you have a question about something, because sometimes you're not going to be next to someone who's going to know the answer. So um, trying to be able to brainstorm, I guess, and um, come up with different ways to find that answer is um, what I find works so okay well thank you guys so much for answering these questions and taking the time to talk about creativity with me thanks grace yeah thanks grace Bye.